Dog Badgers hold Ohio State to six in the first half, the fewest a Meyer coach team from Columbus has ever had. Wisconsin trying to spring an upset, leads 16 6. Stay tuned for the BMW halftime report, and Sam Ponder will speak with Paul Christ right after these messages. Coach, such a strong start from your offense. In your estimation, what's enabled that kind of early success? I think it was, you know, we've had some big runs and been able to run with a little bit of uh, consistency. You know, we still got to uh, get another half, right? And then, like, you haven't heard that from a coach before. But it's, uh, I think we're able to get the running game going. Obviously, I think our defense is playing well. We know that we're going to get challenged in a lot of different ways and we've got to regroup here and come back out. But it's, I'm proud of the way the kids are playing. But as you know, we've got a lot of football still ahead of us. That's true, and you know the way Urban Meyer can make adjustments. So at this point, what's your biggest concern about the second half? Well, there's going to be some uh, things that we've got to adjust or can. We try to do it during the game. You don't wait till second half or halftime to do those, but just got to make sure the kids understand what's going on, things we can improve on, and, and obviously try to be consistent with the things we're doing well right now. Any specific things that need to get better? Not that I'd tell you. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. I don't appreciate that, Coach. <laughs> Back to you guys. He's awesome. In 3-2. Halftime here at Camp Randall Stadium with the score is Wisconsin 16, number two, Ohio State six. Back with more action right after these messages.
Grab real quick. Okay, we're ready. Coach, obviously for some of your young guys, they haven't been in a position quite like this. So what was your message to them at the half? Well, the message is we're just not playing. There's not one single spot. We're not just not, we're not playing well either side of the ball. We're much it's better than that and, and come out second half and, and play really hard. If you play really hard, good things happen. Offensively, where do you see the most opportunity for immediate improvement? Well, we keep taking shots down the field and not working the ball. I'm, I think there's some stuff underneath, but we'll see in a second half. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Coach. ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC in the presentation of the Big Ten on ABC. The Badgers up by 10. Could be a bigger lead. They've really dominated. That guy right there, Alex Hornibrook, in his third start, outplaying an All-American candidate in J.T. Barrett. And an Ohio State defense, Kirk, that was only given up 247 per game, giving up 313 to the Badgers in the opening half. Yeah, we, we talked about it. I think Paul Chris came up with a great game plan on how he's really mixing up different looks. We've seen the jet sweep be effective. We've seen Clement running the football be effective. It's really taken a lot of the pressure off of the passing game. And uh, let's face it, on the other side of the ball, I, I think Wisconsin is just doing what Ohio State normally might do to their opponent. They're beating them up. They're physically beating Ohio State up in that first half, especially up front of the trenches. The Wisconsin linebackers, they've done it against LSU, Michigan State, Michigan, and they're having a great start to this game tonight. Well, we're going to see jump around at the end of the third quarter. Now they begin the third quarter with this uh, little light show. 
All the, the stops being pulled out in Camp Randall tonight. And the Badgers will get the ball to try to add to the lead. Again, it's an Ohio State team. And you pointed out the youth. Fewer returning starters than any Power 5 team. You get that 19-game true road game winning streak on the line. Meyer has never lost a true road game at Ohio State. But his offense has never had a less productive first half. And the deep kickoff by Durbin. And the Badgers will take over. The Pacific Life game summary really highlighting what you talked about. This could, could be a bigger lead than it is. Uh, I mean, it really started early. Uh, their ability to run the football, control things up front, taking the pressure off of the quarterback who's made some great decisions throwing the ball. PB's had a big night running and throwing, and this defense is as good as advertised. Linebackers are incredibly active, making it very tough. Even when Ohio State got deep in Wisconsin territory, coming up with a big play there on a third down, and they have come after JT Bear. They're basically telling Ohio State, we are going to load up to stop your run. Can you throw the ball to beat us? And can you stop our run and feed Clement again? This is a guy that was very limited by both the Spartans and the Wolverines, but Clement with 110 rushing yards in the first half got six more there And I, I know that Paul Chris had success on that jet sweep with PV. I think it can become Potentially a decoy in the second half. They used it even on that first play They put him in motion Ohio State's defense I'm sure that's a big adjustment that they made the Paul Chris play of getting outside They're trying not to lose those edges so they can open up the middle of the Ohio State defense so stretch him wide, then take a deep shot down the middle. We'll look for that. In the meantime, Clement picks his way, shows some more patience there, gets close to a first down. It'll be third and short. Just to feel good for this offensive line that has been so heavily criticized. It is it is a first down. That's a very generous spot. They'll move the sticks. Remember all these guys that following in the footsteps of a bunch of ex Badgers in the NFL eight offensive linemen from this school in the league and they're it, freshmen and sophomores yeah, I, I was gonna say with Paul Chris back and with the strength and conditioning program back to where they expect it to be now They're on their way back to becoming that again. They're just very very young in that development TV has it again that time they were more ready for him as Malik Hooker the big hitting safety Knocked him out of bounds for a shorter game and again, now, now you get the football. Again, this is a successful play. They get outflanked, but there's a great job by Malik Hooker. And if I'm Wisconsin's coaches and I look down and I see a safety that's reacting to that jet sweep like that, now you're going to go back to it. You're going to fake it to PV. You're going to drop back, and you're going to try to hit a post behind it if the safety's attacking down like that against that action. Tony Brook on second and seven, flips it short, and it's dropped. It was off the hands of Eric Steffes, the tight end. It'll be third down. He had him. Steffes was open. Good recognition. He came off, actually, to his second choice there. Ball's thrown behind him, but you know, it's a ball that Steffes can definitely make, make a catch. He's known more for his physicality as a big tight end. Fumagalli makes most of the receptions for their tight ends. Kumagali, the only receiver that's caught more than one pass tonight. He had five in the first half. You think the Buckeyes would pay attention to number 81 here on third down. Tony Brook is swarmed under and sacked. Off the edge was Jalen Holmes with his second sack of the year in the Buckeyes' third tonight. And the entire game plan for Ohio State was to get this offensive line into third and obvious passing situations. And Holmes here in the middle of this Ohio State defense really nothing fancy It's just a, a good combination of power and speed and again It's it's young Bo Benshaw the right guard that continues to struggle on those third down situations before it was Bosa this time It's Holmes One of Those guys that plays with a chip on his shoulder eager to prove himself and there's the punt. And It is a short one field it on the hop and then drops Risky play and the Badgers say they've got it. Don Trey Wilson decided to try to field it on the bounce. And Meyer just drops his head in dismay. And it's going to be Ohio State ball. Somehow at the bottom of the pile, Wilson was able to atone for his mistake. And he just, anytime you see it, you see his eyes. 
His eyes dipped down to see where they were coming from and obviously a big time no no you take your eye off the ball even though you think you're going to be able to secure it right there he right here he peeks up to see who's coming down you either let that go or you just get out of there you, you cannot afford to put yourself in such a dangerous position fortunate Still no turnover tonight yeah he was fortunate to get the ball back Feeds Weber. He powers for a nice game. Sam, what did Urban Meyer have to say uh, coming out of halftime? Frustrated at halftime, just like he is right now. Chris told me there wasn't a single area of football where his guys were doing what they were supposed to be doing. And he knows he's got some young guys who haven't been in this position before, wants to see how they respond. I asked him where the opportunity was. He said it's downfield, it's underneath, it's all there. We just have to execute. All right, thanks. Well, Weber, who came in. The Big Ten lead in rushing yards so far this season, able to get eight that time. Barrett rolling out and decides to keep it and will be stopped near the marker by TJ Edwards. It looks like he may have come up with a first down. That play, it looked a little indecisive there with JT Barrett rolling out and even even once he was almost at the line of scrimmage and beyond the line of scrimmage still kind of looking downfield that he almost cost himself the first down they did get yeah. it to him urban meyer very active up at the top he's hunched over there right near the line of scrimmage there it runs it toward the boundary breaks a tackle shows that leg strength and dives forward not the fastest guy, but tough to tackle. Well, it, it, it's it's that he's so physical, as you said. We talked about that this morning on game day. Is, you know, that you've heard Urban Meyer from time to time compare him to a Tim Tebow. A lot of that has to do more with the intangibles. But Tim didn't necessarily explode when he was running the ball, but he'd run over top of guys. And he's not JT's not quite that physical, but he does bring some physicality. We're able to run through some arm tackles. Definitely not contact averse from the pocket. Barrett puts it underneath, and Paris Campbell makes the catch. First down at the 35 yard line. That was the first time that Ohio State gave JT Barrett some time to throw. And the reason is Wisconsin, instead of bringing those linebackers, look at this, there's only three guys. This time they have five underneath to try to take away the underneath routes. Campbell does a nice job of finding the hole there in that zone. Take it to Samuel and Barrett. Took a look downfield, nobody open, and now takes off. JT weaving inside the 15-yard line. Same thing, rushing three, a little bit of a delayed blitz from the middle linebacker, TJ Edwards, but playing zone, everybody covered. Great recognition that time by JT Barrett, deciding to hold on to it, found a crease there, and took off for big yards. He got 22 of them. And look, keeping all the way and knocked down after a two yard gain. And here comes the rain. All of a sudden, the rain that was forecast arrives here early in the third quarter. Will not make it easier for the quarterbacks. Talk to both the coaches on the field about potential wet conditions, and both telling me that they're very comfortable with the mechanics and, and their quarterbacks having big hands and being able to hold on to the football. We'll see if that ends up playing out. The fans are screaming for the raincoats, and then some just don't care. The students yeah. <laughs> happy to get wet. They've been, they've been prepping for the game since 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> it's Samuel in motion on second and nine. Now in reverses direction. Barrett roll in that way. Delivers into the end zone. Intercepted. A diving pick by Dakota Dixon. He has been a big play maker for this team. Interception in the win over LSU. Forced to fumble against the Spartans. Well, just when we talk about the conditions, I think this ball just comes out of his hand. He has an open receiver there, and he just missed it. Ball floats over top of the potential receiver, James Clark, right into the hands of Dakota Dixon for the interception. I'll take a look at that, I'm sure.
Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. All right, Larry, thanks. Let's take another look at this uh, because the replay official Stephen Beckman has to confirm that, that Dakota Dixon got his forearm under now the watch, ball, Kirk. Now watch his left arm as his body turns. Ball slips out of the hands of JT Barrett. Watch the left forearm turn and get underneath, preventing the ball. That's a great effort from hitting the surface. It's a good interception there by Dixon. So the ball with the rain which was short-lived by the way it's basically stopped it, it lasted just long enough to affect that throw by Barrett in the game's first turnover Clement hit for a loss there flying in was Jalen Holmes who's been active tonight well, Jalen Holmes with some penetration Ohio State remember, they've made adjustments at halftime they've come back out here and the defensive line has has really done a nice job of getting things established up front you see that Nick Bosa playing more and more he's playing right now at the left defensive end along with another true freshman Robert Landers out of Dayton Wayne didn't have too many Buckeyes on his helmet yet he'll get a bunch before he's done talented freshman Play action, Hornybrook backpedaling, and Fumagalli was very, very well covered by Damon Webb. Nowhere to go with it. And Bosa was chasing him again. I was just going to say, Bosa applies the pressure, but give Damon Webb a lot of credit. This is the same play that gave them a problem to not only open the game, but throughout most of the first half, this time completely taking it away is Damon Webb. Now he's 5'10", but he's a former corner, really good in coverage, and even though Fumagalli is at 6'6", that play really didn't have a chance. Great coverage by Webb. Now you put that line and a young quarterback here into that obvious passing situation. Need 11. Hornibrook pressured again. It's a screen dumped off, and they are all over Ogunbowale. Jerome Baker stopped him in an excellent defensive series for the Buckeyes. The second one in a row. Holmes gets in. They're trying to set up, anticipating pressure, but the eyes that time by Jerome Baker guy that it really exploded onto the scene this year and having a chance to replace Josh Perry big interception against Oklahoma but he felt that in the offensive line trying to get out there to block him by the time they saw him with his speed he was already by him and into the backfield Wasowski in the punt and making the catch no fair catch made that time by Wilson and he has dropped in Wisconsin territory at the 48 yard line again some some hesitation from the returner Barrett off the pick back in business with good field position.
we go further so you can. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. And Ford. We go further so you can. We thank Goodyear again. Goodyear committed to honoring limp-worthy athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Had a three-minute rain shower before just during that Ohio State possession. Led to perhaps to the ball slipping out of the hands of Bear for the pick, but now the shower is moving away. Ohio State takes over after a very poor punt. The Badgers 47. Ohio State's defense, two, three and outs. Uh, best starting field position of the night for JT Barrett. Two back look of neither side of the quarterback, and they pitch it off to Samuel, who's pursued instantly. That's just excellent defense. Leo Musso, the senior safety, arrived in a hurry, and Zach Bond helped clean him up. Well, that, that's great defense, and it's also tremendous speed here by Leo Musso. Watch how he runs. You're talking about Curtis Samuel, one of the faster backs, not just in the Big Ten, but the, con the country. But the angle that he took prevented the cutback, and Musso, who is a, a great athlete coming out of high school, high school quarterback, a high school tailback, shows that speed there. He had 5,500 rushing yards in high school. 87 touchdowns. Samuel in the flat gets a couple of blocks and knifes between them to the 40 yard line. Third and short now. And they brought the linebackers these last couple plays, something they got away from the previous series. Remember, we talked about rushing three and dropping eight. This time, Justin Wilcox, the defensive coordinator, says, Let's get back to our roots. Let's get these outside linebackers, 42 and five. Let's turn them loose. Barrett again running all the way and picks his way for a first down. He was slammed down hard by Sitchi before her progress should move the sticks. I'm telling you, it is tough sledding. It is physical. You're going to run the football. JT Barrett carried it 26 times last year, last week against Indiana. There's, there's Watt lowering the boom there on the tight end, trying to make a block. What Sitchi tells we're going to put him in the ice bath. If he runs it that many yeah, times, yeah, but he asked bath. him that, and he was like, eh, you know. Well, it wasn't that bad, but it's a different game tonight. Barrett buys a bunch of time and loops the ball to the end zone. Jump ball incomplete. That was McLaren going high for it. Couldn't collect it. It's actually a heck of a throw. Being patient, waiting for, you know, it's, you're improvising. These are things that are hard to really practice. And with an entire new group of wide receivers, you got to make a play. The ball is thrown right where it needs to be. And again, it's a young sophomore. Look at the shot. He knows that that hit is coming from Sitchi, but he waited and waited until McLaren had a chance to go up and make a play. If he goes up and holds on to the ball, it's a touchdown. Still have yet to connect on one of those deep shots tonight. It was a first down throw. Now it's a second down handoff to Samuel. Follows his blockers, picks up about 10. Great you, knew, you knew he was going to be a big part of the offense tonight, Kirk, and already Samuels carried it 11 times, caught three pat leading receiver and rusher. But he, he's the offense, he and JT Barrett. I think what Urban Meyer wants to see is this offense grow as some other players get involved in taking the pressure off of him. He's JT, he's also been busy again, stopped short. Sitchi again on the tackle. Well, it, it starts with JT Watt setting the edge. 
forcing JT Barrett to try to come underneath, and that's where Sitchi is able to make the play. That combination of 42 on the edge and 48 in the middle, it's been active. TJ introducing himself to JT once again. Watch him set the edge and then watch Sitchi clean it up. JT Barrett would love to get outside, but the edge is set. He's forced inside, and here comes the middle linebacker able to clean it up. Meanwhile, Kirk Jamarco Jones, the junior left tackle for Ohio State, is being looked at by the trainers. A chance to check in with Cassidy Hubbard for an update. Cassidy, thank you. It's fourth down, fourth and one. Ohio State Interest goes for it a lot on fourth down. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but it, they don't have nights like this very often, so maybe that's why they go for it. You know, looks like he rolls his ankle right there, just stepping on the foot of Isaiah Prince, the it's other a tackle. Injury. Yeah. But again, interesting call for Urban Meyer because if you kick a field goal and you make it, it's back to a one possession game. Mm -hmm. But you're right, his, his M.O. is to go for it, and that's what he's going to do. You need almost a full yard. Remember, Wisconsin, one of the best defenses in the country at third and fourth and short. Probably need to get wide to have a chance. In motion in Wilson. Give it to Weber, and he plows for a first down inside the 25. Good forward drive by the... Freshman tailback. Yeah, great power by by Weber, but how about the offensive line that time? Pat Elfline, the center, and Billy Price, the right guard, the two veterans leading the way for the powerful Mike Weber. That's a, that's that's a, a heck of an accomplishment against that defensive front. So on first down, Weber again, and very quick penetration. That that's Sitchy. The former walk on again just flying in there throws his body. You, you know, he's, ball carriers. he's one of those guys and anybody out there that's played linebacker can really appreciate this when he brings up film study and looking at the, the offensive linemen, especially the guards amount of pressure they put on their hands and if they're sitting back in their stance or they're sitting forward in their stance it tips him off on being able to know where the ball is going to be going. So it helps him anticipate where to attack. And that's a great example there, that last play. The dude does love the details, doesn't he? Yeah. How to play the position. Fake it to Weber. Barrett sidesteps pressure, delivers into traffic. And that was Dakota Dixon, who just had the pick. A chance at another one. And Derek Tindall on the Excuse outside. Me, Tindall, yeah. Yeah. Tindall the outside, man to man. Leave your corners on an island. They've got to be able to hold up. You could see the look there. He actually missed his tight end, Marcus Ball, who had his man beat. He locks in on Noah Brown. Ball's thrown behind. Tindall almost jumped it. Third and ten. As loud as it's been tonight. Barrett pressure. Escapes. Delivers far side and a catch made for a first down by Brown. Let's see if they give him forward progress where the catch is made. Now they're going to spot it short. It's going to be fourth down again. Yeah, we just talked about fourth and one and how Urban Meyer he likes to go for it. A lot of times he likes to go with tempo. They're going for it again. Again, they give it to Weber, and he fights hard again, able to pick up the first down just through strength and will. That, that, that was Mike Weber. Last fourth and one was the offensive line along with Weber. This is Mike Weber wanting to get the first down. Look at the penetration. They stop him short right there. There's Sitchi once again. Elfline helping out to push, but that was the power of the big running back, Mike Weber, to pick that up. 12 play on this drive. And now Barrett play action for the end zone. A battle for the ball. A flag comes out as Brown was interfered with by Musso. 
Uh, he was left outside there one on one with Shelton the veteran the senior he has an advantage on size he got behind him Chris and be, when you get behind him and Shelton Pass doesn't interference defense number eight foul occurred in the end zone by rule the ball's placed at the two yard line automatic first down again we talk about this all the time because he's beaten watch, watch his eyes watch his headgear he's behind him right now now he never turns around a lot of contact two officials actually make the call gives Ohio State the ball that right tackle by the way that time looks like he moved before the ball was snapped they got away with one there here's the progressive pylon Ken you knew they were going to take a, a red zone shot to Brown against the short corner but Shelton tough competitor so now ball at the two yard line first and goal Weber muscles down near the goal line stop just short They're trying to get guys in and off the field. And now sprinting down to, to call a timeout. They, they did try to get the some fresh bodies on there on second and goal. Badgers will have to spend one here. Hard to do when Ohio State doesn't substitute. Chris showing some quickness down there to the corner. Buckeyes a methodical drive trying to cash in good field position and cut into the lead. Play a power football by Ohio State in this drive. They've twice converted fourth and ones, taken 12 plays to move 46 yards. Second and goal, and it's downside the one. Think about that. Urban Meyer offense, I mean, a lot of times they'll score in a minute, two minutes. They're going 46 yards, 12 plays to get those 46 yards, and they're still trying to finish off the drive with a touchdown. A spread. A spread Four receivers. Now, you know, if they stay in that look, the quarterback run, obviously. Badgers unable to stop Barrett, who barrels in for Ohio State's first touchdown tonight. And they do cap a grinding 47-yard march to the end zone. When in doubt, 
you follow the veteran Pat Elfline, the senior center, and Billy Price, the junior. Both these guys have played for the last few years. And Elfline that time, a heck of a block. And being able to turn the nose guard to open up a little bit of a running lane for Barrett. Here's Durbin. Yeah. Elfline for sure one of the candidates for the Remington Award the top center in the country. Yeah, watch him in the middle Watch how he's able to just just do enough here to be able to get a push there and open up a nice It's also Billy Price the right guard picks up Sitchie They know they know that it's coming you See the safety have to try to come in there Dixon but Sitchie was picked up by by Billy Price and Elfline also picked up the nose guard and GT Barrett gets into the end zone for Ohio State to cut it to three. And you're right, the guts of Urban Meyer, you get into field goal range, you got a shot to get it within a one possession game. The offense hasn't necessarily been blowing people off the ball. He takes the chance, believes in his guys, and twice and ends up paying off for him to get a touchdown and pull it to three. You get a feeling whatever was said at halftime, Meyer frustrated the locker room. It is, it is. Helped motivate this Ohio State team. The defense has played very well after the break, and now the offense finally finds the end zone. And then they return out short of the 20 yard line. We check back in with Cassidy. Wow, former Ohio State offensive coordinator Tom Herman narrowly dodges a second loss for his Cougars. That loss to Navy may have taken some of the wind out of their sails there, but see what Paul Chris does to adjust. Remember, it's been a slow start to this second half for the Wisconsin offense. Honeybrook rolls out and delivers to the reliable Jazz Peavy on the far sideline. Nice game. I think more than anything, Ohio State has kind of cranked up the intensity at the at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage with the defensive line winning the battle. And the other thing is they, they were able to get Hornibrook into some obvious passing situations, a lot more third and long, where they could kind of put him in awkward and difficult positions to be able to execute against their defense and their secondary. You get eight on the first down. Here comes PV in motion again, but they feed Clement. Who barrels forward for a first down at the 29. First and 10 is such a big part of Wisconsin either having success or not. And they have done a good job of mixing up their looks tonight on their first downs. They've had 15 first down calls. Nine of them have been run. Six have been passed. What doesn't show up in that stat is how many times they've run PV around on the mm -hmm. on the jet sweep to kind of go along with that. So they're trying to keep Ohio State off balance. They need to stay on schedule on second and third. Another first down throw. Hornibrook lobs it out. Intercepted. Coming up to make the pick was Gary and Conley who read the quarterback and closed in. And the Buckeyes back in business. First turnover for Wisconsin. Well, he, he because he is a touch passer, he floats the ball here and he kind of times things up. This time he he put it, see how he puts it up in the air? What I don't think he, did, he didn't expect was Conley sitting there in zone. I think he was expecting man to man and Conley jumps the route and I think he fooled the freshman quarterback as he gets hit right after he throws the ball by Michael Hill. So Conley his second interception of the season, the leader of that secondary that, that calls itself BIA Best in America. Perhaps haven't lived up to that yet tonight, but this big play sets up Barrett at the 38, final two minutes of the third quarter. This crowd, which was once really raucous, now anxious. Samuel direct snap. Wilson takes a little flip and all that window dressing gains a yard. Not only does it gain just a yard, it almost was a, a loss of about 15 or 20 yards or maybe a recovery. That ball almost goes over the head of Curtis Samuel. He, he did a good job just to be able to come up with a football, let alone get it to Dontre Wilson. The guy you're snapping it to, in that case, isn't quite as tall as JT and almost got away from number four. You're right. Samuel lined up to the right of Barrett in the flat. He gets it. 
Tries to cut back and lowers his head. It'll be a third down, and they'll need about five. Go back to that previous play. Look at that. Look at that effort there. Just gets his right hand up. Gives you an idea of his athletic ability, hand-eye coordination. Now you get back to that last series. Is Urban Meyer thinking about four-down territory? Does he call this third-down play, thinking about the possibility of being in a fourth and short? Final minute of the quarter. Barrett drops back and delivers high strike. First down. Still fighting. And is Brown down near the 10 yard line. Watch this throw and watch how he puts it between three defenders of Wisconsin. You've got great coverage there. That ball has to be thrown. If it's if it's late by even a half of a second, the ball is batted away, but he squeezed it in there for the first down. Wisconsin trying to run some subs on. They're still very confused. There's still confusion. And Ohio State with 10 seconds in the quarter snaps it and Barrett moves in front. There was a lot of confusion. Should I come on? Should I stay off? Bad Badgers weren't sure on defense. It's about to be a jump around time here. The great tradition at Madison, but the Badgers are clinging to that three point lead. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Our at and All Access shows you the, the serious operation that the Ohio State coaches have to do to go down to the locker room at halftime, get out of your booth, they hold the elevator, 
But that, that's just the beginning of it. Now you got to jump in a golf cart. You got to drive around just to get to the locker room. It, this is a heck of an effort here. Now, now we're now we're out on the street. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. All right. We're just trying to make a few adjustments here. The AT&T and t and then you got to go. You, you get, you get the pleasantries here in the club. Is it Wisconsin faithful? A couple handshakes. Good to see you. at and inside access. So here we go. Ohio State trying to take the lead. A second and six play as we begin the final quarter of Madison. Dominated third quarter by the Scarlet and Gray. Barrett still got it, pulled it at the last minute, Kirk, as he does so often. But Sitchi kind of waves the finger and said, no, not that time. No, Sitchi has done a nice job of taking him out. But one thing JT Barrett does with his zone read is he really does a good job on the ride. He stay, he keeps it in there about as long as any quarterback I've seen. And the reason that's important is it gives him longer to make a decision on whether to keep it or give it. He made the right read, but Sitchi sniffed it out. Enormous play now in the Badger defense. Hold Ohio State to a field goal attempt, which, if good, would tie the game. Or can the Buckeyes, who trailed all night, make their first lead? Remember, they've had success with Noah Brown this year on fades. But the time running out, we have to spend the time out here. They've tried to pick on him. They got an interference call on Shelton. To eventually set up the touchdown last time. We'll see what they've got cooking after this timeout. Our Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Wisconsin clinging to a three-point lead as Ohio State faces a third and six on the eight.
Badgers get a running start. Six, he came in, flushed out Barrett, but he breaks free and scores. J.T. Barrett runs for the touchdown, and Ohio State has its first lead as he dodged a sack. Well, they brought pressure from Sitchi and Watt, and when they weren't able to pick up J.T. Barrett, there's nobody left on the other side because you can see the corners locked up with Noah Brown. Nobody left, and a big touchdown there by J.T. Barrett. So Ohio State marches 38 yards after the interception from Gary and Conley. Virtually the entire second half has been played in Wisconsin territory. And here's the pick by Conley. First turnover by Wisconsin, which set up Ohio State in good shape. Took him six plays to move 38 yards and 239, and JT takes it home. The progressive pylon cam giving you a good look. Wisconsin has been smothered on offense in the second half. Now they're suddenly down by four. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We did. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. And Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. Badger hockey team beat number six BC 3-1. We'll play Sunday for Eastern on ESPNU. If it were hockey, Isaiah Prince, the right tackle of the Buckeyes, would have been sent to the sin bin <laughs> two minutes for holding. He absolutely grabbed Watt around the waist, a, a kind of a dance move on that touchdown, which helped spring Barrett. He grabs him right there. Barrett gets around it because you could, what did you see TJ Watt flop because of how hard he was held there? Gumbwale from the end zone. Good coverage stop at the 20. Samantha? Chris, I wanted to observe Alex Hornerbrook when he came off after the interception. He did the exact same thing he's done the entire game, which is something I've never seen before. He doesn't sit down or really interact with teammates. He warms up the entire time. And I'm not just talking about tossing the ball around a little bit. I'm talking 30 yards, throwing darts on the sideline the entire time. I talked to Joel Stave because he was down here observing. Asked him if he'd ever seen it. He said no. And it actually could end up being a problem when he goes to schools that don't really have much space in between the fans and the bench. So something something interesting. I'm not really sure what the reason is. Sam, I, I've never seen that myself. Usually you sit down, you're talking with a line, you're talking with Running backs, coaches going over adjustments. Interesting approach. 
Move it up inside to try to get the quick hitter to the fullback. Badger's got to get the offensive rhythm going, Kirk, after that impressive showing. 313 in the first half, 11 yards in the third quarter. Yeah, you always hear that tale of two halves, and so far it has been that. Ohio State has cranked up the intensity. As I said last time they had the ball, the defensive line has done a very good job, not just defending the run, but also rushing the quarterback. Buckeyes showing some pressure on second and seven. Hornibrook flips it off. It's a screen. They go back to Fumagalli, but he has been well covered after halftime. Malik Hooker came up to lower the boom. It'll be third and long. You're right, Chris. I, we talked to Hooker on Thursday and asked him, you know, you're a great athlete, but do you like to hit people? He said, I kind of <laughs> smiled and said, yeah. I, I said, would you rather hit or make an interception? He's like, I, I want to come up and hit people. The acceleration, how quickly he's able to close the ground there and take away that space. The offensive lineman with that speed just didn't have any chance to block it. Great instincts. Hooker is a guy who was an elite basketball player. Didn't play high school football till his junior year. On third down, Hornerbrick for Peavy makes the catch into Ohio State territory inside the 45. He beat Damon Arnett. What a clutch throw. What a throw right on the money. And the great thing for Wisconsin is he gets back and the ball's out. He had just enough time. He'll get a little pressure off to his right. But you can see that the backup corner, the nickelback Arnett, gets a step behind Peavy, who's got great downfield speed, but it's the accuracy and getting back to throwing in rhythm for Alex Hornibrook's the reason that works. And getting back to what he did in his opening start of his career against Michigan State when he was six for six on third down, most of them third and long. He got 36 on third and nine. Clement spins back. He could not escape Raquan McMillan's tackle there. That, that's the answer to Sam's question about him throwing on a sideline. It's for opportunities like that. That was an accurate throw. And, that, and that's really what Paul Chris told us was they had a quarterback battle. When they broke camp, they, and they got to LSU. They started Bart Houston, the senior, who's been a backup to Joel Stave. And eventually, Hornibrook won the job. And Paul Chris telling us really it was the consistency with his accuracy is the reason he's now the starting quarterback. Yeah, it came off the bench in the Georgia State game, and this offense really struggled. And that's when Houston lost his job. Clement breaking free, gets a block, and muscles out inside the 25, and the Badgers threatening again. Watch the left tackle here, Ramchek. Watch him push down the defensive lineman Jones, and it opened that right up. And not only that, you've got big linemen pulling around. The big tight end that time, Steffes, with nobody really to block. But that's the first time in his second half that we've seen that power running game of Clement and his offensive ability to run the football. They got 20 there. Clement now has rushed for 143 tonight. That time they bring PB in motion, but Clement busts up the middle, as you suggested. They use him as a decoy and run up the middle. Yeah, he, he catches the eyes of the linebackers. It slows them down, and, and when you... You bring him around like that, it, all it takes is just a little bit of hesitation to help those linemen get up to the linebackers, McMillan, and also Worley. Good blocks and another good play call, using that as a decoy there to open that up. The Badgers who had led all night, fall behind by four, but threatening to reclaim the lead now inside the red zone. On second and two, Clement, and not escape. Lost a yard as Sam Hubbard strung it out. That's a play that affected them. They, they were not setting the edge. This time, Sam up, Hubbard does play. set the edge. Watch him fight to get outside there, dealing with a block from Maxwell, but does not give up on the play. Keeps his outside shoulder and hand free to be able to get out there and make that play. Now, Clement is going to come off on this third down play. Buckeyes make some substitutions. Badgers need three yards. He's shaken up at the end of that run. Ogun Buale spelling him. They snap it at two. Quarterback flips off inside and they convert the third down little shovel pass to Fumagalli. Again, this is this is a well-designed play, and they've not called it all night. Fumagalli just following the right guard, Benshaw around. Because I like that too. It's a low risk play, right? If it's incomplete. Yeah, absolutely. It's an incomplete yeah. pass if it doesn't work out. Little shovel pass. Taekwon Lewis unable to get down there. And 
well timed there by Paul Chris hasn't shown it the whole game fourth quarter you pull it out and Ohio State not quick enough to react on third down when it's still out of there it may have gotten need in the back on that tackle so it's Ogun Buale in the eye formation he's got it he's not quite the physical runner that Clement is works hard for a couple of yards Hill and Lewis combine on the stop yeah really known for his third down ability to play on third down but you know he, he is still a guy that I think can run the ball between the tackles now we get a look at the freshman Bradrick Shaw can, comes in he's kind of a slasher at 6'1 211 pounds and a taller back he's out of Texas doesn't touch the ball tonight And this is the first carry and Bradrick Shaw he shows some power and some burst and a nice gain down inside the five it'll be third and very short yeah they think he could really be a, a star in the future but the offensive line really watch the center Dieter does a nice job there also the left guard that's actually the left guard that time Dieter is actually able to get up to the linebacker so Shocker does his job one carry and now Clement comes back in for the third and two It's actually a, more like a yard and a little bit. Three tight ends. Behind all that beef, it's the fullback plowing in for a touchdown. Austin Ramish and the Badgers back on top. They love that play, that quick hitter to the fullback, don't they? And they executed very well. Yeah, power running teams love to be able to get that quick dive play in. And Ramish has at 250 pounds the leg drive if he gets challenged. That time he really didn't get challenged. Endicott now tries to convert the PAT, make it a three-point margin. And he does. So Wisconsin, after falling behind Kirk, goes 81 yards in 11 plays. And this is Wisconsin football. You want to see this offensive line be able to kind of, kind of impose their will? Look at that. And that is a great job that time by the right side to open that hole up. And the first time the Buckeyes have surrendered a rushing touchdown all season long. JT, your turn. Down three now.
I said, thank you. Good one there. Very good one here. Badgers back on top. Inside of eight minutes to play. And Barrett will go back to work. Sowski's kick once again is very deep. A Pacific Life game summary, a quarterback comparison. JT with a couple of rushing touchdowns. 11 of 22 passing. Hornibrook after throwing that interception, impressive converting that third and long on the last touchdown drive. Yeah, he has played uh, again very, very well tonight. You can see at the bottom there, JT Barrett also has carried the football 18 times after a 26 carry game last week for a couple touchdowns tonight as well. And now you put the ball back in his hands, down three with under eight minutes to go in the game on the road, see what he can do. JT already was the career touchdown pass leader at Ohio State and now is tied Braxton Miller's school record for touchdowns responsible for 88 total. And he'll no doubt add to that. It's Weber. Knocked down at the 30 yard line after a five yard game. Can these outside linebackers, we're seeing one of them have to come off the field right now. Gary Dooley. He is not 100% right now. Number five out there trying to play. And Barrett throws near side to low completion to a sliding McLaren for a first down. You know, these receivers have been challenged by Urban Meyer to make plays like this. Go down and make a play on the football. Kirk, they get Dooley out of there. Was Struggling with his right leg. Samuel cuts it back, follows a block, and breaks free. Curtis Samuel into Wisconsin territory. It was Weber. His backfield made it through a big block, and there is a flag down now. Yeah, you see Weber helping him lead the way. Two back look. Nice block by Paris Campbell. Weber takes, Coda, take, takes care of Dakota Dixon, but there is a flag down. Holding. Offense to the 25. Well, they got Weber, Kirk. Down. Yeah, he kind of grabbed Dixon and threw him to the ground. I think that's what they had to have called near the. He made good contact at the beginning, but then at the end, he just grabbed a hold of him and threw him down. Good contact. Then he grabs the jersey there. And there's the throwdown. So, number 25's penalty negates a 25 yard gain. If you put those two in the backfield together, it's a little bit of a different look and it opens up the playbook because there's a variety of different things you can do because of how skilled both of them are running and catching. Badgers come after Barrett. Protection holds up for a moment and now JT trying to scramble and is dropped down by Sitchi one more time. Scrappy number 48. That Mohawk. Yeah, he, he kind of kids about you know, he's a playmaker. He leads the team in tackles. He's all over the football. But he, he kind of weird. You were kind of talking to him about what kind of athlete you are because he's made some plays this year against the pass as well. And he kind of kind of poor mouths himself. And got, you know, not that great athlete. I have to do it in different ways. But I'll tell you, when the ball, when he's between these white lines and the ball's in play, he, he has football speed. Yeah, I don't care what he clocks in the 40. He, I he's don't fast either. when he's the, chasing when, guys. When the ball's out there, he makes plays. Barrett now with a lot of time. They rush only three. JT's got all day. Taking a downfield shot for Dontre Wilson, who collects it. Finally, finally, the Buckeyes go downtown and connect. But it, but it was a good job. Uh, again, you, you've got a broken play. He just gave a little bit of a look and a hand wave to Dontre Wilson, who's one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. I mean, Bond's trying to run with him and stay with a much quicker Dontre Wilson. This is a great throw and an accurate throw away from the defender over the outside shoulder to Dontre Wilson. You get 43 yards, and, and Bond was the guy in because Dooley was out injured. So they go after a backup linebacker. Barrett again, plenty of time. Throws for the end zone again, looking for Dontre Wilson, overshot it. And Bond again was out there covering him. 
They had that mismatch. Uh, that's what they asked the, these outside linebackers to do is a lot of times they're rushing the quarterback and blitzing. You see that a lot with T.J. Watt and Garrett Dooley, but they're also asked because they have to stay balanced is to drop in coverage. I mean, it, it's a tough position to play. It takes a unique, talented athlete with some size to be able to play that position. But that time, Barrett actually had Wilson earlier wide open. If he would have seen him, he was just looking off to his right. A.J. Hall, the receiver, motions into the backfield, but Barrett keeps it. And how about J.T. Barrett on this drive? It's been a struggle, Kirk. Passing game still hasn't clicked. He's been a, a physical, busy runner, but you expect a leader like this to take over when Ohio State needs a drive. Absolutely. Game's on the line late in the ball game. He now has carried the football 20 times tonight for this Ohio State offense. Five to, here on third down. Trying to manufacture different ways to make this happen. Curtis Samuel checking back into the game for KJ Hill. And also we get Garrett Dooley back into the game. Play clock is winding down. Both teams made substitutions. You gotta hurry. Just get it away. Barrett keeps it. Cuts it back and is just brought down on the edge by Leo Musso. Made a huge tackle to prevent a first down, maybe a touchdown. That's a heck of a play to be able to not only make the tackle, but Marcus Ball, the tight end, has him blocked. I mean, he is a big man trying to block him. He uses his speed to undercut the big tight end to be able to get away from him and then keep JT Barrett short for the first down. Jim Leonard, the, the NFL great who was the scrappy ex-Badger coach at the DB, says Musa is their best tackler as a defensive back, and he made his coach look smart that time. So Durbin on with a 31-yarder, and he knocks it through. Buckeyes 23, Badgers 23. Final four minutes of regulation coming up. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, NFL Insiders, followed by Sunday NFL Countdown right up to kickoff. And then on Monday Night Football, Brandon Marshall and the Jets. Those are the Cardinals, Larry Fitzgerald and company. 6 o'clock with Countdown and the kickoff at 8.15. Also, want to watch ESPN app.
A progressive pylon Ken giving you an up close look at Bucky Badger. It was Brutus before. Mr. Corso going with Ohio State. As Wisconsin tries to duplicate what they did here in 2010, upset a higher ranked Ohio State team at home. Gunguale. We'll take a knee. And Alex Hornibrook, who spent the entire Ohio State drive throwing, as Sam suggested, goes back to work. Yeah, he, he, this last drive was a great mix. They were able to run the football. The offensive line does a heck of a job throughout this. He made a couple big throws. They mixed in a variety of tailbacks, trying to keep everybody fresh. And here's that right side of the offensive line with that fullback dive to Austin Ramish for the touchdown to give it the time the lead. And the Buckeyes have gotten it even and now this is this is what you train all off season for this is what it's all about for both these teams this is what you want table is set now you got to go out and do it badgers have shown mostly a methodical offense before tonight but they have been plenty explosive 357 to work with plenty of time clement stutter step we well, looks like a completely different running back tonight doesn't he he looks like he did two years ago. He's just a lot more patient. He's fighting through some injuries tonight, too. And he, again, last year injured most of the year. But he is not at 100%. But the patience, most importantly, is back in his running style. He missed a game and a half this year with an ankle injury and it appears to be less than full speed right now. The other thing is, it's nice to be able to run where you have a little bit of room. I mean, he, he has not had a lot of room to run the last couple games. Ogunbowale. So we'll cut and fights for a first down across the 35. Known as a finesse guy, but there he's showing a little bit of power. He's got to. He's got to pick up the slack if if Clement is hobbled. Most guys who go from cornerback to running back, you don't figure they're going to be a real physical player. <laughs> right. Tight formation. They hand it to Ogunbowale, who gets a little crease, gives a stiff arm, cuts it back, and you see the elusive that that's more what he's known for. Eight yard gain. Yeah, but again, that offensive line on a first and 10 run, controlling things up front. They do a nice job there on, on a, you know, you're pulling a guard, you're pulling a tight end, kind of an H back around. The right side needs to collapse the Ohio State defensive front, which is exactly what they did, giving those pullers enough room to come around. And then look at that eight or nine yard gain again on first and ten. Inside of two and a half to play in regulation. Clement is back in there. And he's got the first down into Ohio State territory. And they are moving toward Andrew Endicott range the kicker who has been steady tonight as a fill-in for Caglianone. He's been all you could ask for. Can he win it with one more field goal? Clock becomes a factor now under two minutes Ohio State with two timeouts Badgers also with two timeouts. They're gonna take their time now with as much success as they've had moving the ball here in these first four plays Clement again cuts it back a flag comes in and what would be you figure the holding zone and that could be crucial and they got Brett Connors I think the center here for a hold holding offense 464 10 yard penalty repeat first down there have been some holds tonight that have not been called in crucial plays that when they did spot Connors and, and for Paul Christ that that drive had momentum it had it had everything that you wanted because you had Ohio State on their heels and you're moving closer and closer in the field goal range now minute 38 a critical error by the center on the holding call and now not only do you lose ground but you lose that momentum and that rhythm that they had established on that drive you have to believe that Wunderbrook's going to have to put the ball up in this series. First and 20. Steps up, has time, delivers across the middle. Peavy knocked down at the 50. Nice tackle by Malik Hooker. 
Again, Rodgers get back eight yards. Yeah, again, Malik Hooker is one of the better safeties you're going to watch. Watch how quickly he reacts to this and watch the closing speed after he sees where the route is. Look how quickly he comes in and collapses down on that. But big yards there for Wisconsin. Again, they're trying to get into field goal range here as that clock gets closer to a minute. Winnie Brick down the sidelines. A risky throw. Diving attempt. Picked off again by Conley. His second interception tonight snuffs out the Wisconsin drive. And the young quarterback pays the price for that decision. This is a clinic on how to play man-to-man -man in college football. Watch how he trusts his eyes. Right now, he turns around. At that point, he's almost a wide receiver. Tremendous athletic ability to go up and make the catch. But it was him reading the eyes of the receiver, Wheelwright, getting his own head turned around, and then running stride for stride with Wheelwright. This is just exceptional. They're going to take a close look to see if the ball touched the ground. It looked like his right elbow, right arm got underneath the ball. This is going to stand as a pick. What an incredible. I know that all that, that good stuff you tell me about technique, but the catch is oh, yeah, just a crazy catch. Yeah. Ohio State's had a few of those this year. Hooker had one earlier, too. Just a right arm. Kind of like what we talked about with Dixon, who had the interception. See the right arm under the ball prevents it from hitting the surface. It did pop up, and that's what the crowd is ooing about when they showed the replay on the screen here. So that holding penalty that pushed him back, made it first and 20, kind of threw him off schedule, Kirk, as you yep. suggested. It was ended up being more than a momentum killer, ended up being crucial yep. if this interception stands. Another look, Conley collects it in the right hand, grabs it, and now does he control it? Again, if he's... He could have popped up when his arm hit the yep. ground. They may not have enough to turn this over. No. That could be the play that sends us to overtime. And still, Stephen Beckman looking at it. Dave Kataya, how, how did you see this if you were in his position? Well, I saw it the same way you guys did. I don't think there's enough to overturn it. The left arm is under. Okay, the ball might hit the ground, but there's not enough there to change the call from what I've seen, in my opinion. We'll see. If the interception is overturned, it would be third and 12 for Wisconsin at midfield. And if it is an interception, the ball is on the 20 yard line. After further review, in the process of the player going to the ground to make the catch, the ball hit the ground. He lost control of it. Therefore, it was an incomplete pass. It'll be third down and 12 yards to go wow. at the 50 yard line. All right, so Beckman seeing it differently than you did, Dave, and it will be. Wisconsin ball back at midfield a third and 12 So it puts Hornybrook still in a position to be able to get points on the board But now it's not just about Hornybrook Chris. It's about the offensive line giving him a chance And you know Paul Paul Chris understands that he knows that Ohio State's gonna come after him You wonder if they might try to roll him away kind of move that launch point a little bit to give him a little bit more time to get away from that pressure. See Nick Bosa coming in, all their pass rushers coming into the game, Jalen Holmes, Sam Hubbard, Tyquan Lewis all into the lineup. They, they don't call it, but it is kind of like a cheetah package, isn't it? There's a whole bunch of defensive ends in there. Ohio State looks like they're in man-to-man. -man. Dropped out. Tony Brook rolling away from the pressure and now flips it short, but behind Ogunbowale, it was Jalen Holmes in hot pursuit, and now it's fourth down. Ohio State showed man-to-man -man and then dropped out of it at the snap and played zone. They felt pretty confident that they could give this young quarterback a lot of different looks, especially in that third down package. Show him one thing before the snap, drop to the other. That time, just great coverage downfield. Wasowski into punt. Dontre Wilson back. It's been an adventure tonight for him. You'd think he would just make the safe play, make the fair catch. It was a man right in his face. And he does collect it at the 13-yard line. 41 seconds to play. 
Cassidy Hubbard the long after the game with a four to wrap up show. Big Urban Meyer and his, his play callers. Ed Warner. Is well, that content to just play this conservative and look for overtime? You've got two timeouts. I think you call the first play and you see see how successful or, or if it's a struggle. And then I think that dictates maybe your your uh, your attitude on the rest of the drive. Ohio State is capable of moving the ball down the field pretty quickly with JT Barrett. But it, tonight, obviously, it's been a challenge against this group of linebackers and against this entire defense. They've done a very, very good job of containing the big play from Ohio State. They're going to have to move the ball 50, 55 yards to get in field goal range for Tyler Durbin. As you said, two timeouts. That may answer some questions here as they hand the ball off to Weber, who is hammered after a short gain by Sheehy. And that kind of that kind of tells you, yeah, yeah. That tells you what Ohio State. He's saying, "Let's we got it to overtime, and we're going to play some extra football tonight." You know, Clemson on their home field needed overtime to survive. That was number three, number two on the road tonight. If they are to stay undefeated, we'll have to do it in overtime. We thought it'd be fun tonight, and it has been back and forth. Buckeyes dominate in the second half, but the Badgers put together that one touchdown drive. The end of regulation in Madtown. Back for overtime after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Overtime at Camp Randall, just like the last Buckeyes visit here back in 2012. Ohio State at that point, that year was ineligible to play in the postseason, but stayed undefeated. Carlos Hyde had a touchdown in overtime. And then Christian Bryant batted down a pass to secure it. I'll toss the coin here, and no doubt whoever wins the coin toss will elect to go on defense first. Okay, gentlemen, this is an extra period. Each team gets one timeout for overtime period. They do not carry over. We're going to do a coin toss right now. This will be the only coin toss we do. If you win the toss, you have the option of going on offense first, defense first, or selecting the side of the field on which you would like to play. Ohio State, you are the visitor. Please give me your call. Two. 
Tails is called. It is heads. Wisconsin, you won the toss. Defense. Wisconsin wins the toss and elects to go on defense. Which end would you like to play at? Yeah, okay. GT says right, we're going to point ahead. away Turn from the student play, section. Go down and play that end. But uh, Buckeye offense will get the ball first. Yeah, we'll get away from the bleacher creatures. We'll try to head down to the other, <laughs> the other end. He's a veteran. He expects him to make the right decision there. But uh, we'll see if this Badger defense can make a stand here. Ohio State has been very productive after halftime. Also something to keep in mind. Both these field goal kickers have been great tonight. Both sides three for three for both of them. And so if you're unable to come up with a touchdown, you, you, you'd like to think that that would be able to con continue for both these kickers. Although those goal posts can look a little bit narrower in overtime as much at stake as there is tonight. Paul Christ had Rafael Gagliganoni when he kicked that, that clutch field goal to beat LSU in Lambeau, bombed it out from long distance, and then he injured his back, had surgery, and this guy right here, Andrew Endicott, who again did not attempt a field goal in his high school career. He's a senior, a senior who had more tackles than field goals made in his career, covering kickoffs. Buckeyes on offense from the 25. If you wouldn't have told me that tonight, I'd never know. He, no. is, he has been money. Wilson motions in. They pitch it back to Samuel on a reverse. Slips a tackle. And the Brooklyn native muscles down inside the 15. Heck of a block there in front of him to be able to give him some room to run there. McLaurin, the sophomore out of Indianapolis, gave him that first down. It looked like he might be short, but it, he pushed that defensive back on the, almost into the sideline. Whistle before this first down play. Right tackle, Prince, who's had a rough night. Pass protection moved. Ball start. Offense number 59. Five yard penalty remains. First down. It's only the third penalty tonight for Ohio State that they've been flagged for. You know, Prince is looking out there and he's seen a lot of number 42. And he can do that to tackles. It's not just that Prince is struggling. He's struggling against some really talented pass rushers and guys with a lot of quick twitch and T.J. Watt and Garrett Dooley. So first and 15. Barrett from the pocket over the middle complete. And breaking free is James Clark who gets involved the junior from Florida down inside the tent yeah, good patience there He felt the blitz TJ Watt and also Jack Sitchie came on the right. They were picked up He was looking downfield into the end zone, but ended up coming down and kind of checked that down Good decision to be patient there by Barrett Barrett keeps it. Tries to get outside. Flag comes in as the quarterback is dropped at the five. It'll be first and goal. Watt stopped him, but let's check the marker. We've got a hold by Jamarco Jones, a left tackle from Ohio State. Holding offense, number 74. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. So they, had, they had two penalties all night, Kirk, and now two in this series in overtime. Out there, Alex James, who's trying to chase JT Barrett down, and one of the reasons Barrett was able to get around him is Jones. Now the tackle on the other side. And we've been talking a lot about Prince. This time it's Jones with the with the hold. Our guys making it tough on themselves in this series. Back to second and thirteen now. TJ Wong trying to get his head gear adjusted. Barrett. Flips it to Samuel. The Badgers 
Blows him down. Samuel still has the speed to make the corner and get back down inside the 10. It'll be third down and about two. His acceleration to the corner, and then you think he might just go out of bounds, but then he turns his shoulders, kind of squares up, and picks up another six yards. Meyer out on the field. And this third and two. Bringing Mike Weber into the game. What do you think, Kirk? If he gets oh, Weber, there, does he dare go for it? Weber, probably a zone read of some kind where you give Weber or Barrett a chance to run the football, depending on the read. Got to hurry. Play clock at two. Barrett keeps it. Fires. End zone. Brown touchdown. Noah Brown stretched out and makes a catch and a dart from the quarterback. Give Ohio State the lead. They gave the action, the zone read action, which kind of froze the defense. And then he was one on one on the outside. There's the zone read look. Now it's just one on one. He recognizes the back shoulder fade is there. The defender, Tendall, never really even saw the football. So instead of throwing it downfield, great timing, great job by both the receiver and the quarterback, JT Barrett, going to his guy, Noah Brown. This is an important conversion now. Durbin knocks it through, and Tyndall has played a pretty good game, but he's the guy that got beat by Amara Darbo from Michigan for the game-winning touchdown the last game. Yeah, and it, look at the position where he puts this football. That, that is something you work on and work on, and in fact, when you call the play in the huddle, depending on where the, the defender is in relation to the receiver, dictates where the throw is. So Brown doesn't really know where he's going to throw the ball, he hopes that Barrett sees the same thing he sees, and that's why you practice hours and hours and hours with quarterbacks and receivers with that timing. First touchdown pass tonight for JT to go with the two running touchdowns. That gives him sole possession of the all-time Ohio State record for touchdowns responsible for. They overcome a, a false start and a holding penalty in this series. And now, as you said earlier, now the ball kind of goes back into the hands of Alex Hornibrook in this Wisconsin offense. It's had a pretty good night. Pretty good night, but they have had their issues down in the red zone. Must score to force double overtime. Clement, first down carry, hit immediately. No gain as Webb joined the defensive front that time. When you see a play blown up like that, it's all about the defensive line. The linebackers may end up getting involved in making the tackles, and that time you saw Jerome Baker, but it was really Michael Hill, 77, and Draymond Jones, the freshman out of Cleveland, that, that impacted that play because of the initial surge that they got at the line of scrimmage. Brooks straight back. Flushed. Fires far side. High ball caught. And as Will Wright, the Columbus native, sets up the Badgers first and goal. This is a big time throw from a freshman. Watch this. He gets hit by Sam Hubbard almost as he's releasing this. Throws it to a spot. And there's Will Wright, as you said, out of Columbus. The toe tap to get them both down. Heck of a catch and a big time throw by Hornybrook. You're right there. He got he got cut in half by the hit. The young guy showing his toughness and his accuracy. And it's Clement behind Ramish in the eye formation. He's got it, but again, penetration and no gain. Chris Worley, the linebacker, cleaned it up. Watch him close down on this. We'll see Landers come here. Worley coming around from the outside. Landers being able to get in there just affects the timing of it. The polling guard unable to pick up his block, but great penetration there. I'll tell you, Robert Landers has a great future. A true freshman that wasn't necessarily highly talented, but he has had a great start to his young career. Badgers have three plays to get four yards and force double OT. Women goes in motion. Horny Brook back, paddling back, paddling, and has to just throw it out of the end zone. Third down coming up. They tried to hide Fumagalli there on the play action. He, he was blocking. They were hoping that the linebackers would just assume that he was in the block, and then they released him late. But Raekwon McMillan, again, the leader of the defense, picked him up, and the freshman just gave up on the play and had to throw it out of the back of the end zone.
Clement. Drag down for no gain. That was Baker sprinting out to drop the running back. It is fourth down. Badgers down to one play. All comes down to this. Heck of a play there by Jerome Baker with his speed to be able to chase down Clement. And now you're Paul Chris, one of the best play callers in the sport. A lot of things have worked. Now you wonder how does he give his young quarterback a chance here to execute and throw the football. Ohio State will be coming after him. Urban Meyer is going to call a timeout. So now you got Paul Chris trying to come up with a play that will work. You've got the Ohio State defensive brain trust. Luke Fickle, Greg Schiano trying to put their puzzle pieces in place. And this Ohio State team been trailed throughout much of this night. A lot of youth in that group right there. A lot of inexperience battling back and trying to secure a win with one more defensive play. I think what Luke Fickle and his group are trying to figure out is do you play man to man or do you play zone? You, you play man to man and you're at the risk of maybe some rub routes or some picks down in this area. If you play zone, you're at the risk of Fumagalli and others finding a hole in that zone. So they're trying to kind of figure out what they think will give them the best chance. One thing, you know, they're going to bring some pressure after Hornybrook. And Paul Chris, you call him one of the best play callers in college football. He's got the right play call. And then his young quarterback, who's played so well tonight, can execute it. Ohio State, a stop away from their 20th consecutive win in true road games. Playing man to man. Ball game on the line. Warney Brook. Knocked down. Ohio State makes a defensive stand and survives in Madtown in overtime. Nick Bosa and Taekwon Lewis got in the quarterback's face. And Barrett with a touchdown pass in overtime to Brown shows his medal. He denies the Badgers an upset. Street fight, that's what Urban expected. He got it. That's exactly right. How about the pressure? We just talked about coming after Hornybrook, but it was really, Chris, it was a combination of the coverage downfield and the pressure. There's nowhere for him to go with this football. He's trying to get PB, who you'll see coming into your screen. But watch when the pressure gets to him. And look right now, there's nobody open. You'll see PB trying to work in his inside here. There's just nobody open. It was great coverage downfield. Nobody open. He's forced to just eat the ball. And Ohio State gets to him there on the last play of the game with Jalen Holmes. This Ohio State defense that came in so dominant but was reeling a bit in the first half played a much, much stronger second half in an overtime. They secured the victory. Let's go to Samantha with Urban Meyer and JT Barrett. All, yeah, Chris, all smiles and hugs down here. Coach, uh, at halftime, no smiles then. So what was the difference between your team in the first half and late in this game? First of all, this is great for our conference. What an environment. Uh, a, lo a lot of respect for our opponent. That was a that was a ball game. Uh, halftime, we, we didn't, you know, there was a lot of yelling and we just didn't play great. Uh, but a lot of people don't play great in the stadium on the road. And they hung in there, hung in there, and it's a young team that's getting older. They're maturing. What is it about this place that makes it so difficult? You've played in a lot well, of tough road environments. Now. They're good players. And that's, when you start talking about places, places without good players, that's, they have very good players. They play very hard, well coached. They beat LSU, they beat Michigan State. Very good team. We're gonna get out of here and win and go home. Last thing for you about this guy, the love development guy. through. I've, I've seen that. that what can you say about his development through this game when things weren't clicking early? Yeah, but he's a soldier. A soldier. He's a warrior, and he's a guy that uh, uh, fights through adversity. And, and I knew at some point he's gonna go win the game for us, like he's done many, many times. A lot of confidence from your head coach. Thanks, Irvin. JT, uh, hearing that from your coach has got to feel good for one. But how would you describe your mindset throughout the story of this game? I think it was just keep on pushing. We knew there was a good football team. They had a great defense over there. Like Coach said, they got good players over there. So let's uh, give them credit as well. And um, 
you know, they had a good game plan for us. They had an extra week to prepare, so we was, um, had to make adjustments in the first half. I think after halftime, we came in and just had to grind it out. You've been through a lot on this team, but obviously you've got some young guys in this group. So when you have a situation like that, how do you help them push through when things aren't looking good early? Just understand that these are the things that we go through in the offseason. There's the grinding out, the two a days in the, uh, August, all those things prepare us for moments like this. And this is the time where you got to bring it out of you. Did your team get better tonight? Absolutely. I think mindset coming in a place like this with a great team in Wisconsin uh, in a hostile atmosphere, a great place for college football. I think uh, we, d we grew up even more this week. Last thing for you, when you heard Jeb Brown, did you want to jump just a little bit? Was there just a, a tiny I did a little bit, but I knew we had folks in go score. So, uh, no, nah, but it's a great atmosphere here, and uh, that was a good team. Huge win. Congratulations, JT. Thank you. Go Chris. Forward. Urban Meyer, as Sam said, not smiling. You can see, wow, he just, you could read his lips right there. As the Buckeyes stay undefeated, escape, and they'll be back on the road in another jazzed-up environment next week in Happy Valley. Penn State coming off a bye as the Badgers were. Clement and Wisconsin left it all out there and came up four yards short in overtime. Barrett Kirk again busy as a runner, carried it 21 times at a couple of touchdowns after halftime, throwing the ball 11 to 15, buck 45, and the game-winning touchdown to Brown. Yeah, the, the game-winning touchdown that put the Ohio State defense in a spot where they wanted to try to get pressure. And this is the guy that I think he was trying to get the ball to where he's got a couple receivers going out, trying to, again, man-to-man, -man, trying to set up kind of a rub or a pick, but the timing of the play doesn't work. See right now, by the time he's trying to work free, this is what's coming in after him. The play just did not work out. Ohio State had it completely covered downfield. And uh, give the Buckeyes defense a lot of credit. They were challenged tonight against a, a well-prepared offense by Paul Christ. His quarterback played well. The running game was much better tonight. But the Buckeyes came up with a big play on that side of the ball when the game was on the line. And a similar finish to their last visit here to Madison. We mentioned that game four years ago. They scored top of the first, and then the defense makes a stand and preserves a seven-point victory on the road. <laughs> Defenders just kind of run around looking for people to hug. They, they <laughs> really had to work hard against the determined and in a very, very crafty Wisconsin offense throughout most yeah, of the I night. Mean, keep in mind, I, I think you get a bye week after five games. You take advantage of it by resting up. And, and kind of trimming the fat a little bit and trying to figure out yourself scout and you find out where it's good and what's not and they were so prepared I mean they, they came in here not hoping to pull off an upset I mean, they came in fully anticipating that they were going to win the game this is a football team by the way with Wisconsin they played LSU Michigan State Michigan and Ohio State it's four big time opponents and, and I think that's what came brought them into this game feeling that they had a chance and I thought Sam asked a great question to JT Barrett did your team grow up absolutely young team learning how to win on the road they've won in norman now and now they win tonight one of the toughest in atmospheres in the country well kirk it was an interesting week in the top five it was alabama emphatically but you had number two and number three in the polls having to go to overtime to survive you're going to give us uh, give us your top four now yeah you know clemson kind of has the feel of ohio state a year ago where they they have a, a team and a nucleus uh, a lot of them are back from a year ago. They just they, they're kind of just not quite clicking So I dropped them down to four move Michigan up to three Ohio State kind of sta stays there at two and and Alabama If I could create a gap if I could go Alabama gap two three and four I, I would do that because I think Alabama right now is kind of all by themselves Huskies first out in your yeah. top four. Yeah, okay. Huskies are coming very close Let's uh, give a shout out to another team your street cred brought to you by uh, Allstate how this about, week. How about Vandy? That was uh, a road win. Yeah, impressive, impressive the to see. Yeah, they go to Georgia Derek Mason gets a big win and it's Something we've been doing all year long with uh, with street street cred. It's something on Twitter It's a chance for us to recognize a team That's kind of the team of the week and with Vandy being able to win on the road in a, in a game that not many people anticipated Congratulations to Derek Mason and the and the Commodores with a big win. It's their first SEC road win Meanwhile, we'll be back um, in this same time slot a week from now It'll be this Ohio State team again going on the road against Penn State the Lions have struggled But it'll be it'll be a wide out. It'll be another crazy environment that this Ohio State team's gonna try to overcome But I think if, if you're if you're Urban Meyer and you're JT Barrett and you're the staff you got to feel like 
going into another you know what it's like with Penn State at night in the whiteout you got to feel like having this experience next time you get put in that position there's there's confidence there with the youth now that they've seen what what's out there and how you have to grind through these games for 60 minutes and tonight they found a way to win we'll see what happens next week grind through is a great way to put it Ohio <laughs> yeah. State surviving as Barrett runs for two throws for one and the fourth sack of the night for the Buckeyes finally seals it in overtime Hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have. Ohio State wins it 30 to 23 in OT. Tonight's game produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley, for our entire talented and dedicated crew here in Madison, and for Kirk and Samantha Ponder, Chris Fowler saying so long. Next week again, in State College in Beaver Stadium for the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions. Time now for the Ford wrap up show, and let's go to Cassidy Hubbard back in the studio. Buckeyes and Urban, all smiles now.